In the last part, blueprints got introduced and we made our first visual script that rotates the pickup. Now it's time to actually make the player, the ball, and move it around. So first, we need to get the input. We can configure the input mapping by going to Edit, Project Settings, and the input is somewhere here in the engine. It's about halfway. If you don't have this maximized, then you probably have to scroll down a little bit. We only have to work here where it says Action Mappings and Axis Mappings. Action mapping is more like a press and release kind of button input. Think about pressing a button to jump, reload a weapon, or to interact. Axis mapping, on the other hand, is a continuous kind of input, like moving. Think about the joysticks on your favorite console controllers. So we'll add in buttons here to move our ball. For the first axis, I'm going to call it horizontal to represent going left or right. Adding in another axis by clicking on the same plus sign we clicked before and calling this one vertical to represent going forward and back. We made two axes, but we need to pick which buttons to associate them with. There is none underneath both of the axes, so we need to change them to the proper button and we can add in more buttons by clicking on the plus sign next to the axis. I'm going to speed up the video just a little bit to put in the buttons quickly. Finally, I'm going to set negative 1 to A oops, and S to represent that they are going in the opposite direction of D and W respectively. For example, if A and D scales were left to be at 1 and we script it to go on the X axis, then both of the buttons will make the player go in the positive direction, in one direction. So that's it for the input part. Let's go make our player blueprint. From the content browser, right click and create a new blueprint class. For this I'm going to go with the pawn as the parent class because I believe the description matches with what we want. And I'm just going to call it B, BP player. So let's open it up. In the viewport it will be similar to what we did with the pickup but instead of a cube it will be a sphere. So I'm going to go to add component sphere and just drag this on top of the default scene root to make it as the parent. And before I continue to script, down here in the physics component, we want to simulate physics. This will give permission to the sphere that it is affected by physics and we want it to move around. So up here in the vent graph, again, before I continue in the last part, I noticed I had a hard time scripting and talking at the same time. So I'll just explain the steps and thought process like I did with the arena. So what I'm going to do what I'm going to do first is that I'm going to get rid of these events because we don't need it and we're going to use the input and that they can be accessed by typing in their name. So we want to pick access event and I'm going to do the same thing here for vertical. And we need to combine them so that way we can have a direction like which direction should the ball go in. So this is where make vector will come into play. It will combine these two axes, these values, these floats into a vector. Now we have direction. I'm going to make a variable called speed just for something I can play around with. Just, you know, see if I can find. Making a variable speed, speed and I have to compile to set a default value. So I've been comfortable with 2000. You can, of course, adjust this speed to whatever you like and I'm going to use it and I'm going to multiply it with the direction thus giving me thus giving velocity when you multiply speed with a direction you pretty much create uh, velocity so I'm going to multiply it by I'm going to use the vector times float And then for the physics part, there's this thing called add impulse. So this will use force to push the ball around. And I need to connect from this white arrow to add impulse for, from each event. This is like a this is like the actual flow of the events. So without it, it won't you won't run or call this event. It won't do the add impulse. So I'm going to compile and save. 
And before I leave, I'm going to comment and just say move ball. So let's drag and drop the player blueprint and and let's watch the ball move around. And we are moving around or we're not controlling ball I should say and we're, because we're still flying around. So what's going on? Game modes. Unreal has this thing called game mode where we can set a few rules for the game or a game mode within the game like who is our default player? what which heads up display we should be using the state of the game etc for example in smash ultimate you can play normally in smash mode with other people or computers or you can play by yourself in training or in home run contest another quick example is in mario kart do you like to race against other people in the grand prix or do you like to battle out against each other in, in versus mode in our case Unreal has a default game mode for us in this project, and it has its own player that we've been controlling the whole time. We need to make our own game mode, so right click in the content browser, pick blueprints again, but this time we'll be choosing game mode base. I'm going to name it my game mode, and double click to open it up. And we don't have to worry about the looks of it, but over here in the details panel where it says default pawn class, we want to change that to be our player, the, the BP player as the default pawn class. So I'm going to hit compile and save. Now we have to tell Unreal that we want to use our new game mode. So in order to do that, we go to edit, project settings, maps and modes, and then over here, the default game mode is set to either none or default game mode or game mode base. It could be either of those. But I want to change it to my game mode. And you can see that the default pawn that we're going to play as is our player. So let's play again. But first, I'm going to delete the player there because since now it's the default uh, pawn, it should spawn where player start is. So I'm going to hit play and we can now move around. Uh, the controls might be a little bit inverted and we may not, and the camera seems to be right inside the player so we can't really see our ball. Um, as for the camera, we can do that in the next part, but for the controllers, we may need to play around with this and rotate the player start. So I'm gonna have it facing this way, see how that goes. So going forward and back seems to be normal. It's going in the right direction. However, going left or right, it's like inverted. So I probably have to go to project settings, back in the input and just swap these numbers around. So one for A and negative one for D. Go and try that again. And it Looks fine. All right. So again, next part, we'll try to see if we can get the camera to look at the ball. So thank you for watching. However, if you're coming from Unity, please stick around just for a little bit. I'm going to talk about the similarity between the two engines about inputs and game modes. In Unity, one of the things I would like to point out is that there really isn't a game mode or a game state feature in the engine. That is probably something that needs to be created from scratch and perhaps it's part of the game manager's job to keep track of the game state and mode. As for input, Unity does have something similar to what we did in Unreal. It's a preview package in package manager called input system. An input action asset contains the input mapping but in order to use it though, you will need to generate the C-sharp class and integrate it with your code. So here's a snippet of the code that, that uses the, the new input system, but I can make a tutorial out of this another day. So that's it for this part. We did a lot getting the input to move our ball around and dealing with the game modes for a little bit. Next, we should fix the camera so we can actually see the ball. Comment down what you thought about all this stuff, and I will see you in the next level. Bye.